crispy, light as a feather pastry. That's what this one is all about. And check out that beautiful spiral pattern and the crimping and all the things. <laughs> this is my version of the classic curry puff. So this one, it's all about the pastry. The pastry is key here, my friends. And let me tell you, it took me ages, a long time, lots of different goes to work this one out. But now that I have worked it out, it's gonna be very easy for you. <laughs> Let's get going on that dough first of all. We need to make two different doughs here. So the first dough we're gonna make is the water dough. And look, I've seen these different doughs called so many different things. Um, uh, water dough, oil dough, butter dough, uh, lots of different names. We're just gonna go with, wait, oil dough, no water dough. Dough? Water dough or old? Let's call this one the water dough. <laughs> the main point is that you want to use some cake flour. The cake flour has um, a lower protein content. Um, it's not going to give us as much stretch, doesn't have as much gluten, um, which means that we're going to get a shorter pastry, which is a bit more crumbly, which is kind of the, what we're after here. You could use all purpose or plain flour if you can't get a hold of cake flour, but I get the best results with the cake flour. Now add in some salt here and some sugar. Just give that a mix. Now the fat for this dough is oil, hence we're calling it the oil dough. Mm. Let's call this one the water dough. <laughs> Oh my goodness, even I'm getting confused. We're calling this the water dough, but we're adding oil. We're adding oil, we're gonna add water as well. Goodness, this is so confusing. <laughs> That's just a plain vegetable oil. Let's give that a mix. And once that mixture kind of looks like this, now you want to go in with some warm water. I always like to add a little bit at a time so that, you know, every time you kind of make a, a dough, the I find you maybe just need a little bit more, a little bit less water, depending on all sorts of things, the humidity, the brand of flour, um, you know, all those sorts of things. So, and all the measurements, the exact measurements for this are on my website, guys. Um, it's just annoying to go through all the different conversions with friends from all over the world here. I've got all the details in the written recipe. So head to my website to find that. Now, once you've kind of got this thing going on in here like this, you wanna get your hands in there and really squish that dough together. You can see it's now forming quite a nice sort of sticky ball in there. So I'm gonna get that onto my bench top here. And the idea here is that you really wanna work this dough until it's really nice and smooth. So that's going to be about 10 minutes. You just want to knead and knead and knead. And we'll come back and have a look at what it should look like. Okay, so see how this is really beautifully smooth now. It went from kind of being a bit flaky to being really nice and smooth. This just needs a bit of a rest. So I'm just going to wrap, wrap this up. And that one can just sit on my bench top while I make the butter dough. Start again with some cake flour. And this time you want to go in with some cold butter. And just kind of rub that butter in with your fingers. Now the reason we do the two types of dough is that to get that really lovely spirally texture, um, you need two different types of dough that won't kind of like, I don't know, glue themselves together so much that, that you don't get the difference in the in the little layers. Um, and it just really makes for a really light, crispy dough, the combination of the two. I've, you know, I've seen curry puffs made with puff pastry, um, you know, filler pastry, that's all well and good. And that, you know, they're quite good with that kind of pastry as well. But for me, like, you know, the Thai street food snack version of this is the best. And that's using, using this combination of doughs with that really crispy light texture. So, you know, I like to go to the trouble of making these properly when I, when I have the time. All right, so I've got this kind of like wet sand kind of situation going on here. And it's actually quite interesting because I think these, the origin story for this curry puff is like, it kind of is an amalgamation or a mixture of histories. Um, you've, I think um, it's kind of like a mixture of the, the British pasty. Uh, you've got the Spanish empanada. You've got the um, Indian samosa. It kind of has all those vibes to me, if you like. Um, you know, this butter pastry being more like a, a Western short crust pastry, if you like, like for an English pasty or um, an empanada kind of thing. Although do you use butter for empanadas? Oh my goodness, my Spanish cooker 
agree, not so good. So all the Spanish people can below can tell me about how to make uh, empanada dough. Um, anyway, so this is obviously more of a Western style dough though with the butter. Uh, now to here, we're gonna add some water. This is just room temperature water. So we added warm water before. Did I tell you to add warm water? And once that mixture kind of looks like this, now you want to go in with some warm water. Oh my goodness, I'm really mixing everything up today. But uh, this time it's room temperature water or cold water because I don't want that butter to melt too much. That's why. And again, just mix that. And again, get your hands in there when everything starts to come together. And with this one, we don't want to do too much kneading. So with the butter, if I went and just did like 10 minutes of kneading, I would literally have like a buttery mess all over my hands. And actually, even as I'm pulling this dough together, I'm really just trying to use my fingertips rather than my palms because your palms are a lot warmer than your fingertips. Um, and I don't want this dough to heat up too much. Now I'm going to wrap this guy up as well. And for this one though, because of the butter content, and as I said, I'm trying not to get that butter to melt everywhere. I'm actually going to put that into the fridge while we make the filling. So we're doing a spicy potato version today. And what you need to do is just take your peeled potato and I want some, um, I want some sort of small dice here. I don't want the potato beat to be completely like a big mush. I do want some kind of little chunks rather than a mash. Now scoop those up into some boiling water. Now don't forget about your potato, okay? They're in small little chunks, so just let it kind of cook for about 10 minutes, come back and check, make sure it's not, uh, they're not overcooked or they haven't turned into a big mush. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to slice up uh, some coriander stems and roots for my filling. I like to do the stems and kind of um, fry them off with the aromatics first of all, and I'll leave the leaves until a bit later on and add those in kind of fresh when the, um, when the filling isn't too hot. That way you get a really nice fresh coriander hit with the leaves, but you also get the depth of flavor with the stems and the roots. I'll save those leaves for later. Now, if you don't happen to like coriander, that's okay. Um, just uh, swap these out for some spring onion. Uh, you could do some herbs like dill or basil. You know, go your own adventure there, guys. Now, to keep going on this, I need some oil in a hot pan. Now, add in some onion. And whenever I'm cooking onion, I always love to add a little bit of salt, not only to kind of layer up, start layering up the flavor and the seasoning, um, but to also help soften those onions up because the salt helps to draw out the moisture from the onions, which helps them get nice and sweet and tender, all the good things. Now that the onion is nice and sweet and soft, now we can go in with our garlic and those coriander roots. Smelling so good already. Oh. Um, curry powder. We're going to go in with some curry powder. Now, I'm just using, in fact, I don't even know. This is like, um, it's just a curry powder that I just get from my supermarket. So it's not any special kind of curry powder. Um, you could use garam masala, uh, any kind of uh, blend of spices that you usually use for a curry wherever you are in the world. In fact, why don't you tell me what kind of curry powder you guys use? Because uh, I'm always really interested to know. So, um, my curry powder isn't too spicy, this one, um, because my kids love to eat this as well. So keep it a little mild for the kids. Now at this point, if your potatoes are ready, um, go ahead and add them straight in. If they're not, just switch this off and wait for your potatoes to cook. But I think mine are going to be ready. So I'm just going to scoop them straight out and into this mix here. So now you can go in with some frozen peas. And some soy sauce here to add some extra flavor and saltiness. A little dash of sugar. You won't even taste the sweetness, but it just gives you that little bit more of a, I don't know, like a depth. Um, you know, a roundness um, to the flavor overall. A little bit more salt. 
and some white pepper. Now give this a really good mix and you'll see some of that potato start to break up a little bit. That's cool. Um, I kind of want that potato to be soft but a little chunky as I said. To finish off that filling, when it's nice and cool, add in the coriander leaves. Alright, so we have arrived at the pastry making time. This is actually really cool guys, I love this technique. Um, okay, open up your uh, water dough or the oil dough first of all. Oh, and I forgot, um, take that butter dough out like about 10 minutes before you wanna do this rolling because it'll have firmed up so much in the fridge um, that it'll probably be a bit too firm to roll it out. So, you know, ten, five, 10 minutes before you wanna do it, just take that out. But first of all, we start off with our oil dough or water dough. <laughs> really need to sort out the name. Um, water dough. Okay, so I've just got some extra flour here. I always like to have flour when I'm rolling out dough in case things get a bit sticky, but let's just see how we go, huh? And I always like to keep my dough moving around so that I can tell if it's gonna stick to the bench top. This one seems fine. I think because we've got that oil content in here um, and my bench top is not too sticky, I guess, uh, this is all moving around very nicely. Don't need to add that flour. So now unwrap your butter dough. That goes in the middle here. And fold the other water dough all the way around over the top. Completely cover that butter dough. Okay. Now at this point we need another little rest. So pop that dough here. And I want you to give that 15 minutes. No cheating. Would you cheat if this was you, Dax? Yes. <laughs> How good are your curry puffs? Terrible. <laughs> okay, that was a legit 15 minutes. I timed it to be sure. Uh, come back, unwrap your dough. Now, if you live somewhere really hot and 15 minutes out um, might make your dough a little sweaty or a little soft. Sweaty, sweaty dough. <laughs> no, no, okay. Now, if you live somewhere really hot, maybe um, just leave the dough in the fridge for 10 minutes and five minutes out on your bench top. Um, I'm in a temperate kind of 25 degrees Celsius here, so I'm all good. But you just don't want that butter dough on the inside to get too soft. Um, you'll be right, I promise. Just in the fridge a little bit if you're somewhere hot. Okay, now the point is here that we want to roll this out and you really want a rectangle shape here because um, if you don't get a nice rectangle when we start to do some rolling, the edges will be a lot thinner than the middle and you know everything's a bit uneven and my OCD kind of thing kicks in and I'm like, oh no, disaster. Um, you don't have OCD kind of tendencies and you won't need to worry about it, but I recommend going a rectangular shape. Okay, so once you've got a really lovely thinish kind of rectangle here, then you can start from this, this bottom edge and just roll that up. Now, just spin that around. And again, I wanna roll this out again. And I wanna achieve that same rectangular shape. So that might take a bit of like, sort of coaxing here. Kind of squishing again rolling. Okay, now again, we've got our rectangular shape here. Um, I want you to roll it up just the same as before. And there you go. It's kind of a thing of beauty already. Look at that lovely spiral in there. Ah, oh, that looks so nice. Okay, um, now we want to divide this up and we're going for 20 portions here. So however you want to make that happen, but let's have a look in here because this really is a quite joyful to look at in here. Look at that, that beautiful even spiral all the way through there. That, my friends, is just beautiful. <laughs> Things like this make me so happy. Okay, um, all right, stop being happy about the dough. Let's get on to making the actual pastry. Um, just cut those up until you've got nice, sort of, sort of like little 
discs, coins, if you like, of, of dough. I like to set them out on a, a tray or a board. Now grab yourself one piece of dough and just put a cover on the rest of those other pieces so they don't get um, dried out and roll out that piece till you've got it like it's that sort of like oh, maybe three millimeters thick or something or two, two to three millimeters it's pretty thin uh, and then just peel that carefully off your bench top now you want a scoop of uh, filling maybe about like just over a tablespoon First of all, just fold the bottom half over the filling and then just pinch, squish together the edges. So you're starting off with, you know, kind of this kind of shape. Now to do the crimping, uh, we kind of, you're kind of mainly using your thumbs here. So use this first thumb as a guide to kind of crimp that pastry over and then move on to the next one, move that thumb, pull the other pastry over that and just kind of like work your way around with your thumb as a placeholder, I guess, for the crimp before and sort of just pull that around. There you go, just kind of push it down a little and just shape it nicely at the end there. And that, my friends, is just pure delight. Look at that, so cute. Oh, so cute. Okay, uh, pop this onto a tray, just with some baking paper in case it sticks, and then just keep going. Now at this point, you can pop your tray of beauties here into the freezer and keep them for another day. Once they're really firm, just pop them into a Ziploc bag and get rid of the tray so you're not taking up so much space. But I am going to cook mine straight away because I am very hungry for curry puffs. <laughs> Always hungry for curry puffs, but today I'm extra hungry for curry puffs. All right, so just need some hot oil here. I'm gonna put my curry puffs in. Just do this in batches so you don't overcrowd the oil. Um, again, if you overcrowd the oil, you get the temperature dropping and then things don't get crispy. So we don't want that at all. I like to keep them moving in there once I've got a few in there. Turn it over. Now these should only take about three or four minutes. You'll be able to tell because they will be beautifully golden and crisp. So when you've got things looking like this, look at that golden deliciousness there. All right, just pop that out onto some paper towel and continue on with the rest of your batch. Now just have a look at that tray there. Wow, that makes me so happy. I love all that, you know, all that hard work that we went to to get that pastry just right. And look at that lovely golden swirl pattern that we've got through there. That's just the way I love them when I'm getting them um, from a street food lady or a, um, a market in Thailand. Oh, I miss Thailand. Um, <laughs> now pop these out onto a plate. And this is optional, like quite often in Thailand we don't really serve them with a sauce, but I like to serve them with some sweet chili. So without further ado, let's get in there, shall we? Let's break this open. Oh, look at that. That pastry is out of this world good already, I can tell. Oh, see how really thin, like so it's so crispy, but it's so thin. And this is what I mean about this particular pastry dough. I mean, if it was too thick, then you'd get like, you know, big kind of doughy clumps of it, um, particularly where you've done that crimping, but this is going to be good, my friends. Um, all right, so just a little dunk here. Mmm. Mmm. You know, when something is this perfect, it's just, mm, there aren't even the words. 
the pastry just melts. It literally goes crisp in, in, in your mouth, but then it just disappears like a little cloud. Mm. And that filling so beautifully soft, beautifully spiced. Mm. Good thing I made a lot. <laughs> these are gonna get destroyed. Mm. Oh, I haven't had one of these since I was in Thailand, in Bangkok, before COVID. Mm. Yum. Oh. Glad I figured out how to make the pastry. Mm. The world needs this pastry. Definitely. Yum. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one. And that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks guys.